squat it sounds yeah. like an exercise from my gym man hi bala hi morning all well you yeah, think well. you have a new background man yeah yeah background foreground everything is new today because i have, i'm sitting in uh, the educational township of manipal so great yeah. <laughs> basically that means that uh, yeah so usually people who come here are either educationists or look seeking for education i am neither so i put it that way <laughs> i think i'm beyond that now never did that so which is why we are doing all this stuff right yeah yeah so, so, so anyway, what are we welcome, here for <laughs> yeah yeah welcome to tweak the week so this time today we are going to talk about enter the dragon movie no actually return of the dragon It's certainly movie man <laughs> yeah, no, we not yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah we are not referring to the <laughs> bruce lee movies of the 70s we are referring to something that happened as recent as uh, a day ago two days ago maybe uh, we are talking about quad quad It sounds yeah. like an exercise from my gym man <laughs> <laughs> yeah there were four guys doing exercise <laughs> yeah exercise <laughs> flexing our Yes. Muscle. So, But yeah. Let's think our metaphorical muscle muscles in this case. Muscles. So it is actually the quadrilateral security dialogue. Okay. We are talking about yeah. talking about international diplomacy. Diplomacy. Something we can be very sure of will not bring us any eyeballs in this program. Because as a journalist, I can certainly say, Raj, whenever you write about diplomacy, hardly anybody reads. <laughs> yeah. And as journalists, we were hardly diplomatic. So, yeah, but I have always had a fascination because I always wanted myself to be called a diplomatic editor or a diplomatic correspondent, as opposed to a rude correspondent or a rude writer. <laughs> well, that doesn't stop us from being diplomatic or rude. But then I think let us start. So, so, uh, so by the way, I mean just just so that you guys know, Quad as an entity started in 2007. It's not a yeah. new new uh, new idea. So mm-hmm. the Japanese Prime Minister, I think uh, Shinzo Abe, Abe or whatever, how, however you pronounce his name, he was the brain behind it. And uh, you actually had Manmohan Singh from India joining, and uh, who else? I mean, the Aus- Aus- Australian PM of those days was who? I forgot. Joe Howard, Howard, John ah, Howard. Howard, ah, John Howard. And the, India, uh, I mean, U.S. There was the, the, the president didn't join. Now Dick, Dick Cheney, the vice president. Yeah, vice president joined. So it started off then as a move to sort of uh, get. activity up on in the indian ocean because that is where all of these countries somewhere are linked now us is not but then us has a presence now so however it didn't work out initially and uh, uh, largely because one china sort of realized that it is something in, that is against <gasps> uh, uh, it's then, interest. in its interests and a uh, bunch of things happened one after the other especially uh, in 2018 manmohan yeah. singh visited china from china. purely from an indian perspective so yes. kind of there was a thaw in india indo china relations yeah so so sino indian relationships there was a thought so man, i mean india sort of moved a little out of it and then there was a situation where uh, australia also sort of uh, moved out and japan which started this uh, uh, they also sort of put that in cold storage and of course america uh, since everything nothing worked america also said okay forget it so this was the background so now what is happening now bala what is what is it that has happened now suddenly why is the quad quad is i mean it's a good question because i mean let's this 2021 it's not something which has come back i mean it has kind of been revived from 2017 that was around uh, practically around the time when china started its uh, flexing its muscle it kind of became a kind of a global villain if i can use a metaphor global villain. at least some of the big countries kind of saw it that way and mm-hmm. uh, it was around the time that uh, trump also had i mean he saw a lot of bad blood between us and china so that was where it kind of got revived and there were a couple of military exercises last year november 20 around november 2020 we also had a joint military exercises of what many countries and this uh, pandemic global pandemic and uh, china with china at, at its epicenter it also kind of faced in the process of quads revival so now and uh, all things put together finally we had something a kind of a summit a first summit that happened last evening friday indian time so uh, with us it's a virtual meet with us hosting it and a lot of uh, good things were spoken about a lot of positive things about uh, kind of a cooperation between those four countries were spoken about but none of the four countries actually took the name china specifically there were specific, there was no specific mention of china but of course there was 
implicit mention but that not the nothing specific against china but in the sidelines and in uh, in kind of subheading china was discussed in bilateral bilateral pressures between india and china those things were discussed but they were not the talking heads or the talking headlines yeah so we can also sort of probably go back a little and try to figure out look uh, uh, so you have four countries in this grouping and yeah. each country seems to have an a, a sort of a, a, a extra grind you are right i guess to pick with china uh, of its own uh, if india for india it was the uh, it was the aggression on the eastern borders uh, the us of, of course it is them I and us has it's been going on it's not new it's been going on for a couple of years at least now uh, uh, all all these issues related to uh, data security and stuff like that and trade issues also trade issues largely trade issues uh, australia again had a scenario uh, build up with uh, china yeah and, on the uh, china uh, china seas and also trade because uh, let's also not forget that uh, china is the biggest trade partner of uh, australia yeah. and some of its products were banned or some sanctions were issued lobsters wine stuff like that yeah and japan and china of course go along with so we we'll leave it there <laughs> so so one of the so which basically bala what i am understanding is it basically means it's return of the dragon right in one return of the dragon but you brought up a important point each of each of these countries have a problem with china and uh, some of the experts point out since these problems are extraneous to other countries that's what this doesn't allow some kind of a cohesion within within quad Hmm. because you have your problem i have my problem but we don't have a common problem with china so that doesn't add to the cohesiveness of quad quad because quad is generally referred to as a asian nato but it doesn't have the institutional backing of nato so th- that is one of the criticism laid against uh, quad which is there by which is in a sense true but these countries can always come together because there are a lot, lot of areas where they can find common ground hmm yeah so that is that that is going to be the key right i mean if you if you sort of pick up uh, different issues and bring them to the table uh, i don't think the, that table will ever have china on it, on it right i mean there's but not going to be any different i mean this thing is just creating a power block the world is your enemy's enemy is my friend so if china is a enemy to us and india india china being india's enemy you and us and india are the bound to get sally <laughs> yeah so where do you see this i mean where do you i mean at least it's when i to think about it where do where do i see this going i mean i would probably say that i see this going uh, not on the ground as such i mean this is my perspective not on the ground as much but at international forums see you, yeah yeah go ahead no i mean like like say the un or some international forums where you can make an effort to push the envelope even in wto maybe i don't know see there are a lot of areas for cooperation and it was kind of mentioned in one of those uh, joint statements or the joint uh, i mean where this uh, people may mention one is certainly one area is certainly military cooperation mm. certainly another area is technology and the supply chain two areas where they specifically talk about a technology cooperation and supply chain cooperation supply chain and technology can especially technology 5g and supply chain where china used to be the manufacturing base for several of these american companies those things can help i mean those companies can move out of china and actually that is what is happening i mean we can certainly point out that apple for one is certainly trying to move out of its base from china and some of it is actually coming to india raj you have reported you have wrote a, you wrote a story a couple of days back about how iphone's latest iphone 12 is being manufactured as close to where i am sitting it is being manufactured it at sri paramudur a few kilometers away from chennai so that has happened it, that has happened this month iphone 12 is being manufactured in china i mean in, in in chennai away from china which used to be the case so those things are certainly happening not just chai, to india a lot of things are moving to indonesia to vietnam those countries have a, as you said have a bone to pick with china and that is also another area where this what is looking to is this covid covid vaccine one area is they have specifically committed themselves to is the see where the us will develop the vaccine india will manufacture it and uh, china, us and uh, japan kind of uh, fund it while australia uses its supply supply chain 
ability, logistics ability to take it to the rest of the world. And they have committed themselves to manufacturing 1 billion doses of those vaccines. So those things are certainly going to help the international community and also bring these four countries together. Yeah. So that is the cooperation. Yeah, so now, I mean, so one, the only thing that is left for us to th think about or discuss is uh, how does China react to this? I mean, we are sure that, I mean, we don't know how it will, I mean, you won't have, ah, ooh, those things won't happen. But uh, yeah, what could be China's reaction? Because see here, you, you said two things, Bala, let me just bring this back uh, for, uh, for all of those who are watching. Uh, one is military cooperation, which, okay, that, that would probably serve as a deterrent, which is fine. Uh, the other one is economic cooperation, which is where China is going to hurt, right? That's where they will feel the heat. Yeah, you're right. So how does China respond to that? Because at the end of the day, India is also not sort of pushing China out of the country vis-a-vis -vis investments. There are Chinese investments still happening in India. There are investments lined up. All of that is there. But uh, how, do, how does that work? Yeah, it's a good point. But China obviously will not, as you say, will not come right out against these countries. But it will, because China has its influence on many of these countries because Chinese products, China, not just China's products, and China's influence goes beyond mere technology. A lot of Chinese infiltration in a real sense has happened across country. And China is kind of trying to isolate India because the China's mouthpiece, Global Times, has specifically singled out among the Quad countries, singled out India as its target. And it has kind of described Quad as an empty talk club. Mm -hmm. And it also it also kind of uh, undermines India by saying India has become a negative asset to BRICS countries, mm -hmm. so which of which India is a partner. And it also kind of brings up India's you know, traditional non-aligned policy. India, by aligning itself with the four specific countries, with specific grouping, it's going up, uh, giving up on its usual non-aligned policy. But I think that's when this, as far as this non-alignment goes, I think that is that idea is dead as a dodo. You need some backup. So you need to align with some grouping or the others. So, so we have moved away from that. That is actually good for us. But this, I mean, I will go back to what I said ago. It is quite to be taken seriously and take on the challenge that China will come up. It needs to have institutional support. Otherwise, it will be just empty boasting. Because NATO has institutional support. It regularly conducts military exercises. And it has a, all these countries are militarily tied up. So if we can arrive at, I mean, whether we can arrive at a military tie-up is something, I mean, far too in the future. But it, they can certainly do a few other things which will kind of link up more organically these four countries. Yeah, so so so, which basically means that if 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 you if if uh, you were looking at the scenario holistically, you would think that if so, I mean, one of the things which I think we can go back and tell tell people, viewers is that uh, 2007 we actually had the uh, some the, the Operation Malabar or whatever it was called. Okay. Uh, that was the yeah, that was, that the, was the initial point, initial initial point. So if you have Operation Malabar two coming up sometime soon over the next six months to one year then you know, okay, there is some institutional support because the United States does want its presence. It already has a presence in the Indian Ocean, but it wants to establish a stronger presence. And uh, Australia obviously wants uh, allies in that area. Um, Japan, I mean, uh, they also are part of that group, I guess, although Indian Ocean is slightly far away for them. Exactly. And uh, China and India are the key area, key guys who, who would want to control that area, right? India, yeah. of course, yeah, it's part of... I mean, it's part of our maritime thing. So one thought that comes to me right now is uh, maybe India is playing it quite smart in a, in a certain way because, see, what China did was, like you said, to isolate India, they actually uh, started pumping in money into our neighboring countries. Um, India seems to, India's diplomacy seems to have sort of taken a different route over the last few days to the point of even providing Pakistan with uh, COVID vaccines, right? Exactly. And, uh, and the agreement saying that, okay, we'll, uh, we'll I mean, uh, sort of a ceasefire sort of a thing over the LOC. Um, so, see, it, India seems to be trying to regain ground that has been, had, had been lost for some time. That's and, a good point. India getting brownie points with its COVID vaccine policy, yes. uh, diplomacy. International brownie points has been, uh, has accrued yeah. to India. And that is a valid point, Raj. You bring up a very yeah. important point. Yeah, so that, see, that also, so using Biden to sort of... Uh, push the agenda further 
so india you india was uh, with uh, trump earlier we all remember that now using biden to push the agenda further and saying you know what now let us get this going so whose interest of the four whose interest is it the most to get quad going probably india's exactly you are right you are right but another aspect to this development is there is a certain amount of bonhomi between india and us which people didn't expect after trump's exit because they thought biden may not vibe pretty well with modi but ex- i mean uh, going by what I, i just go by what i read and what i saw in tv there has been some kind of a usual vibe i mean general vibe between biden and uh, modi and uh, biden specifically said uh, good to see you modi the kind of words that you generally don't associate with international leaders because they tend to stick to pretty standard lines bala even we don't say that to each other here <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah, good to see and uh, these personal touches are important yeah. and uh, this is another thing which is very important is us is kind of the it is driving the plot i mean biden is hardly 50 days into his administration and this is his first international multilateral kind of a multi multilateral kind of a summit and for him to st- for us to stick its neck out and conduct something like this is pretty important that in itself will send a larger message and it is pretty important for the indo us ties also because they are slowly moving away from china trade policy because us is kind of helping india see you so how do you pronounce two away or how i never huawei. get that pronunciation huawei. right then. how do you wow i guess wow away so after that we are scored in the us is trying to help india by i mean us companies like qualcomm is helping india to set up 5g infrastructure yeah. so that this 5g infrastructure would help other countries to go away from the chinese infrastructure they are kind of tied to chinese infrastructure and software so they want to move those countries and they are trying to help india so this is so which basically means i mean uh, uh, just one more thought two more thoughts actually one of them is <laughs> completely as usual it will be completely uh, i mean a bad pun and the second one of course is what is coming now which is that uh, so there could be a scenario going forward where uh, political speeches in india could revolve around manmohan singh's 2008 china visit uh resulting in all this uh, uh uh manufacturing industry losses and now modi reversing it yeah, if he can i mean he deserves it i mean he deserves the credit i mean i am no i am nobody to question what is happening but then just making a point that could be a scenario that could be a narrative that we might hear in the coming days do you agree you never know you never know i mean i mean it's a narrative you're right it's a narrative narrative is what people spin out <laughs> spin out so i'm i'm i hope that if uh, if uh, the bjp doesn't have this idea let them watch this they will get this idea we are giving it to you free we don't, we don't even charge man <laughs> raj you are as wicked as china raj yeah. <laughs> oh and the last point last point i why said is you asked what how do you pronounce huawei it's like you and me asking who are we who are we ah, okay good yaar yeah, yeah. very existential <laughs> existential question i mean if only we know the answer to it life would be a lot easier life would be a lot easier so we'll keep it that way we'll probably come back and revisit this some other time because it's a honestly i mean we had our fun we made jokes honestly this is an important thing which is happening in the uh, international arena at this moment so we probably will come back with a little bit more as things uh, crystallize because this is just one day after the, the actual summit so what we know is what we have uh, seen on tv and what uh, what statements were put out so statements are usually uh, statements statement that sounded very next time we discuss oh. diplomacy we must get all serious and start wearing blazers or coat man yeah i know somebody will take us seriously discussing yeah. diplomacy wearing a t-shirt yes i agree to that so on that happy note uh, this is uh, raj narayan and bala signing off on this week's week the week so we'll catch you soon next week with something else maybe the same topic i don't know uh but then so that's it from manipal and see you soon